For this exciting launch of Doublethink, a feminist challenge to transgenderism, I have chosen to read parts of chapter four, the trans culture of violence against women. Transgender activists, many who are self-declared women, that is men, have invented a new equation. Violence equals the misgendering or mispronouning of any trans identified person. As one trans activist tweeted, quote, intentional misgendering is violence and should be met with violence. In this view, violence is not mainly physical aggression or assault, but rather words that trans activists find objectionable. Conflating misgendering and mispronouning with actual physical violence diminishes the meaning of rape, woman battering, and other forms of physical harm and frees its perpetrators from any accountability. Actual violence loses its meaning. If anyone questions any tenet of transgender ideology, it is called violence against trans identified persons. If parents question the prescribing of dangerous puberty blockers and cross sex hormones given to their children, that is called violence against trans children who are being denied needed medical care. If lesbians or other gender critical women refuse the sexual overtures of natal men who claim to be lesbians, that is called violence against trans lesbians. A self-declared woman, that is a man, can engage in the worst kind of threats and violence against feminist critics. But any woman who speaks out against trans dogmas is accused of hate speech. Any questioning of trans truths invites threats and violence against women who are smeared as TERFs, that is women who are labeled as trans exclusionary radical feminists. The trans invented term of TERF invites violence against feminists and other women who won't get with the transgender program. The trans branding of women as TERFs is itself a form of hate speech that attempts to dishonor gender critical women and provoke compliance with the demands of trans activists. On social media, the ever present threat of violence against women is perpetrated by trans activists who have become experts in the classic art of re reversal. That is the act of making someone change to its opposite. For example, in trans world, women become perpetrators, not victims of male violence. Turf is a slur and its use has enabled enormous levels of bullying, abuse and violence against women, especially in trans activist tweets that appear on social media. Two of the most frequent trans refrains are kill all turfs and punch turfs, as if punching and killing are games in which one player tries to surpass the other in viciousness. These tweets pervade sites like Twitter and other social media. They are incitements to violence used by perpetrators who employ bullying and intimidation as their weapons. Even when actual violence is threatened, social media companies do not take seriously the posts that target women, such as, I kill bitches like you, unquote. Instead, the posts are passed off as controversial humor rather than as incitements to violence against women. Companies like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube host such harassment, claiming they are not the arbiters of people's free speech. Yet they forcefully intervene when feminists post transcritical messages online. They have censored and canceled feminist accounts. 
Twitter permanently shuttered feminist publisher Megan Murphy's account after she referred to a self-declared woman as him. Many will excuse this kind of menacing behavior as the blather of vocal trans activists, but this kind of intentional unawareness encourages those who should know better from condemning these venomous tweets. Those who plead ignorance can hide behind the smoke screen of free speech, or they dismiss trans Twitter harassment as acceptable because it is only empty threats. When women are the targets of these tweets of trans activists, women don't experience this misogyny as an empty threat. As Andrea Dworkin has written, most women have experienced enough dominance from men that no threat seems empty. Appeasers will claim that trans violence against natal women is a small part of the trans community. But this claim is belied by the actual numbers of trans activists who reveal their true hatred of women, blatantly displayed on social media. Those who would attack and censor feminist critics are not just outliers in the trans community. Gender critical lesbians have been especially subjected to the fiber threats, cyber threats, harassment and bullying of women. In 2018, a group of lesbian activists organized a peaceful action at the Pride March in London, carrying banners and distributing leaflets with the slogan, get the L out out of the forced marriage of LGBT. The backlash against the pride action included threats and demonization of the lesbian feminist activists who organized the action. The most violent reaction came from, from uh, the Manchester pride organizer, Tony Cooper, who outrageously asserted that the protesters should have been dragged out of the march by their saggy tits. This is the kind of hate mongering that lesbians experience. Much of the worst violence against lesbians and gender critical women comes from the various flavors of trans and gender non-binary men who move in LGBT affinity groups. Many young lesbians socialized it in these groups, but have never been exposed to lesbian feminism. Their trans friends and acquaintances, most of them self-declared women, pressure them for sex, intimidating them into saying yes. And what these young women learn from mingling with the LGBT crowd is never to use the word lesbian, never mind feminist, to describe themselves, lest they too be branded as TERFs. Men who self-declare as lesbians with their alleged lady sticks relentlessly hassle young women into believing it is discriminatory to set sexual boundaries. When writer and author Max Robinson, a young lesbian whose book Spin Effects has published, mixed in the LGBT community and after several of her friends were raped or beaten by these men. She began to recognize that trans and queer ideologies impair women's ability to name what is happening and to disregard their own sexual abuse. Robinson said, there is no way to be lesbians in, this, in that scene. If you're a lesbian, you have to fuck trans women. And if you don't want to fuck trans women, then you're evil. They will come right after you. And it wasn't just a few. There were a lot of trans women acting that way. The Lesbians at Ground Zero report quantified the trans violence against women in these groups and named the sexual exploitation for what it is. 56% of the respondents in the study said they were pressured or coerced to accept a trans woman as a sexual partner. 
The report confirmed that many of the young women's experience, experiences classify as rape, although were not named as such. The survey confirmed that lesbians have been subjected to a, a wide variety of sexual violence by men who identify as trans women or gender non-binary. The LGBT culture of violence against women prompted writer Kitty Robinson to collect personal accounts of women who could speak candidly about their sexual abuse and in some cases to out their predators. She produced an anthology entitled, You Told Me You Were Different, now published as a book. The topic was the harmful ways that male people who identify as trans treat female people within the, clear, within the queer and or trans community. The title captures the belief that these men, most who identified as women or gender non-binary, purported to be different rather than the very models of male sexual entitlement and abuse that they turned out to be. The report documented the whitewashing of rape and other sexual violence that victims experienced. Female victims of male violence in LGBT culture were the women identified as lesbians, trans men, or gender non-binary all write about the ways in which they were lured by men's claims of being distinctly different from abusive straight men and about the harms victims experienced. Men who perpetrated the violence identified as trans women or as trans lesbians or as gender non-conforming, all claimed to be different, but committed the same violence against women in the same ways that other men do. In Double Think, I excerpted selected quotes from the You Told Me You Were Different anthology. All are appalling tes testimonies of harm. <clears throat> For example, L.E.W., a contributor, writes, pressure, control, manipulation, threats, lies, a hand raised, then lowered, raised again, screaming at my flinching, telling me he wished I dressed like a real girl so he could borrow my clothes. Inebriated rages, then sober ones, ignoring my no, forcing my legs open. Anonymous writes, the last time I saw you, you slapped me across the face because it aroused you and choked me in the most dangerous way because it aroused you. The last time you told me how you had masturbated to the idea of raping me because it aroused you. What an ideal victim I must have been, a young woman with years worth of sexual trauma. I have finally found myself and reclaimed my lesbian sexuality. These young women, many who declared themselves trans men, came to these LGBT circles with all the baggage of female vulnerabilities. In spite of their male and gender conforming identities, all were treated as women to exploit, whereas the male abusers who are self-declared women or non-binary behaved with all the oppressive behavior of predatory men who seek to confuse and abuse women. Unfortunately, many people want to see no evil, hear no evil. There is a deafening code of silence about the misogyny of trans activists and a painful lack of response, especially from progressive men and women to challenge rampant trans tyranny at women's events and on social media. Too many bystanders are looking the other way and are allowing trans violence against women to spread, whether in words or in deeds. Well, first of all, I would like to thank both, both Spinifex and the WHRC women who have made this launch possible. 
I also want to thank Sheila and Anna for their very generous remarks about my book. In closing, I guess, or in, in approaching uh, the end of this, this launch, I will add a few words about what makes me optimistic about the future. And that is the young women who are desisting and detransitioning from their past masculine gender identities. Some of that I quoted in the recording that you heard, but they are writing not only about their experiences or violence in the LGBT community movement, but they are also confronting the double think of transgenderism on websites, podcasts, webinars, and in public testimonies and other media. For over 30 years, I worked to combat the sexual exploitation and trafficking of girls and women. I have spoken with hundreds of women in systems of prostitution who have testified that it is not a choice and not a job. It is sexual exploitation. In writing this book, I have learned that there are lots of instructive parallels in the testimonies of survivors of prostitution and survivors of transgenderism. Detransitioners are the survivors of trans violence against women. Many young men who have experienced male violence against women in their so-called trans affinity groups for men who identify as women are now detransitioning and telling us that they have rejected a system that has kept them in a situation of sexual exploitation. We have seen the global prostitution survivor movement take a leading role in the campaign to end prostitution. Likewise, in spite of everything that we have, we know, I do have optimism about the impact that detransitioning women will make as they begin to write about their journeys of returning to their selves. Trans activists have taken their ideology and practice to absurd lengths and people have played along with it. We are in the group, grip of a repudiation of reality that is responsible for much harm. And principled people must be willing to speak out and say enough. I hope that more people will come to see gender dissatisfaction, not as a disorder requiring medical treatment or as a matter of self-identification, but as an issue that will not be resolved until we challenge both the traditional and progressive gender defined cultures and also the denialism that perpetuates them. Thank you.